Okay. Where's uh, Nick? Nick, what's his name? Nicola. Nicola. Got the list of questions. Kevin's question. I think Kevin's question about climate connection with people, you can't change things. Groups, the world, and that and this will lead us into compassion. So far, we, we virtually only talked about the wisdom wing. Yeah. So essentially, we've been looking at the at karma and delusions, the component, the, the second noble truth, the causes of suffering. So right now we're looking at our suffering. This is for us, to understand ourselves, to deeply understand ourselves, why things happen, my delusions, and then how to then use this for the future, for my own sake for my own sake. So what comes from this is strong renunciation, which is really like compassion for yourself. You recognize your suffering, the different levels of suffering, and you know the causes. So now you know what to do. This is for self, this is self-respect, you know. But because we're so caught up in guilt and shame and deserve and all that stuff, we can't hear karma properly. We can't hear karma properly. It sounds so heavy because we're so used to the punishment mode. You know, a creator punishes and rewards that a sin by definition is doing what God said not to do. So that's the same attitude we have to mummy and the world. You know, I'm naughty. I didn't do what mummy said. So this lead, this, this is a very strong dualistic view that causes so much sort of internalized anger. Yeah. You know, so we can't hear karma properly because of it. You know, whereas, like I said, I use the example of say you go to the doctor. You know, I can't breathe properly, and then she discovers it's because you smoke too much. And it's best to be, you know, just to, to safeguard yourself from getting cancer in the future. It's best to give up cigarettes. <laughs> You've just, you know, you've discovered the name of the suffering and its cause. So you don't go and blame, beat her up. How dare you tell me what to do? You don't feel guilty. It's a revelation. Oh, now I know what suffering is. Now I know the causes. Now I know what to do. You're happy. Not angry, not, de not, 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 not guilty. But this is what we come, when it comes to morality, we, we're so mucked up, messed up, you know, so confused. Mm. So um, the more we understand this for ourselves, the more this prepares us for the compassion wing. <laughs> The more we understand karma, and the and and, and and which is the causes of my suffering, and my delusions, and I wish to get beyond it because I'm sick of suffering, then I'm qualified to look at the whole world and realize we're all in the same boat. And this is the basis: karma, understanding karma and delusions, the second noble truth. Is the sound basis of valid compassion. So, right now, without the view of karma, with the view that we didn't ask to get born, no one knows why bad things happen. It's good luck and bad luck. Or at least the reason we think bad things are happening is because some naughty person did it to us or did it to others. 
So we have the blame mode. We have the blame mode. You know, so if we so look at outside in the outside world, we see some people are suffering. But it's only the first kind of suffering. Those who are experiencing the bad things. And the next thing we do is find out who did it to them. Uh, so you see the dog, you see the dog suffering. You look for the person who harmed him. You have compassion for the dog. But to that degree, you have anger for the guy who kicked him. We see, a, yeah, we see a child who has been abused. We have compassion for the child. And then to that degree we have anger for, to the father who harmed the daughter. So, the, so we, have, we, we see poor people. So we get angry with the rich people. This is the view we have of suffering. So our compassion is mixed with anger. Yeah. Or we look into like countries and see suffering, and we don't, you know, we just see where every turn there's suffering, there's terrorism, there's this, there's that, and it just overwhelms us. And we don't know why it's, and we don't know why it's happening. Yeah. So, so the confusion, so the compassion is incredible. But either we get angry and st <laughs> angry, or just overwhelmed and confused. Yeah, that's the problem. The anger is the problem. Based on a wrong view, Buddha says. Based on a misunderstanding of the main causes of that person's suffering. Yeah, or just plain confusion because it just seems to be overwhelming the whole world. There's always suffering, there's always poverty, there's always terrorism. You know, it's just too much for us. We can't handle it. So, so Buddha adds, Buddha's got different different approach. First, he says that's the only the first kind of suffering. When the bad things happen. Second, the main cause of suffering. That suffering. And this is why it's too shocking to hear it. Just speaking technically. Not mucking around, you know, just speaking technically. The main cause of suffering for any individual who has suffering is their past action based on a delusion. So just sort of to make us feel a bit better, we have to remind ourselves what's the cause of happiness. Same. Our past action, based on a virtue. But we forget that. We forget that. So that should balance it out for us. It should balance it out for us. But then we think, what am I going to do with that? I see the dog being kicked. I see the dog being kicked. Then I hear Buddha says that the dog did it to himself. Then I get very confused. Oh, well, he's not innocent. So he's not innocent. He deserves it. So what am I going to do now? We're completely confused. Because we are caught up in this deserve model, you know. Because our compassion right now, our compassion now, has to be for what we think are innocent victims. And that usually comes to animals and children, you know. So we have, Buddha saying we have these lots of assumptions about the causes of suffering. And it takes a while to hear his view without neurosis, you know. So it really takes a bit of unpacking. So then the, then the other confusion is there are other levels of suffering. So then there's all the people, you know, the, the happy rich people. Why would I have compassion for them? Because they've got the second kind of suffering. You know, the suffering of having attachment. But that, we never, that never occurs to us. 
Mm. That's what the commonest response is. Oh, I'm not suffering. Because I'm not, you know, because I'm not being raped. I'm not homeless. I'm maybe not completely poor, etc. So our view of suffering is very narrow. So hearing about karma and the Four Noble Truths, it forces us to open our mind to the le different levels of suffering. The, and we can start looking at our own. Start looking at our own. That informs our ability to see the suffering of others. Then when we understand that everything any sentient being experiences is the fruit of their own actions, so we understand why the dog is suffering, and we have such compassion out of ignorance, out of ignorance, that sentient being, having harmed in the past, didn't know that it would cause him to get future suffering by being, getting kicked by somebody. So for this reason you have compassion for the dog. For that sentient being's ignorance. For that sentient being's ignorance, even more so because the poor dog hasn't got a clue why they're suffering. Then the human is being kicked. The human is being kicked. Even more suffering, more compassion for the human. Because they really believe they're an innocent victim. Because they believe they didn't ask to get born. They believe it's not their fault. So then they get angry and want to harm the person back. Thus increasing their suffering which causes them to continue to harm others in the past and to continue to be harmed. Then you look at the person who kicked them. Actually, you'll have even more, you'll have even more compassion for them. They were the victim in the past. And because of their anger then, well, I'm going to get back at that person. Sure enough, next life, you do. You kick them back. So you have even more compassion for that person. Because the victim at least has just finished that karma. And the guy who kicks is just beginning a new set of suffering karma. So we just go on and on and on and on in this terrible, terrible cycle. Suffering not knowing the causes, blaming everybody else, deepening our suffering. For this reason, we, our hearts break for all sentient beings. But you can never have that level of compassion until you begin to understand your own karma and your own suffering, which will have to bring compassion for yourself. Not, oh, I'm bad, I deserve suffering. It's due to your ignorance. It's like now, you know, it's, now you, it's, it's like you get cancer now of the lungs. Yeah, you did cause it. But not out, don't beat yourself up. It's because you didn't know back then that Mul smoking too many Marlboros would give you cancer. Due to your ignorance in the past, you are now suffering. That shouldn't bring guilt. That brings sadness. That brings compassion for yourself. And now you're determined to learn from it. And then you can have compassion for the person who's harmed you. Because you realize that out of his ignorance, he didn't know that he was causing suffering by harming you. And now you can have compassion for him because he will suffer in the future for what he's done to you. So if you think of a victim in this life, easy to have compassion for them, right? But just think of, think of them as the, in the past life being the one who did the harm. That's too hard for our minds. That's why we love to have compassion for innocent children. This is why it is horrifying to see some innocent child being raped and think of them being a, a male rapist in the past life. 
Because men usually rape, don't they? They've got these long things. That, no, excuse me. Don't worry. They, they rape. It's, it's boys who do it, isn't it? Usually. So think of it as a little innocent girl being raped. It is too much for our minds to imagine that person was a boy in the past life, a man and a rapist. So look at the rapist now and imagine they'll be born in the next life as a little girl who gets raped. We don't like doing this because we want an innocent victim. We want an innocent victim. And we want a horrible monster. This is our problem. When you have the view of karma, it kind of evens out, you know. And your heart breaks for everybody. One minute victim, one minute oppressor. We're all in the same boat. So to get a much, you've got to have a, to understand karma, you've got this bigger, bigger perspective, you know. And then, of course, to start thinking about happiness. And when we think of karma, we never think of happiness. Like I think I've said, you know, and I say it and I really mean it sincerely, in all these years, when we talk about karma, it's always in terms of the bad things. So, of course, if we talk about the Four Noble Truths, which is about suffering, that we do indeed look at the causes of suffering. But we have to extrapolate. It's also talking about the causes of happiness. But like we discussed, I think, a few days ago, because we have masses of attachment, which is a junkie for good feelings, when we get the, all the good feelings, when the good things happen, we never ask, why do they happen? Oh, what's the cause of this? Why are people kind to me? Why do I get a job? We never ask why. We don't care why. Just give me more, please. That's because of attachment. So we take it for granted. And even the arrogance, the hubris of ego, hubris, there's a word, the hubris. Look up the dictionary. It's a good word. Look it up. H-U-B-R-I-S. Look it up. It's a good word. It's a particular kind of arrogance. What does it say? Yeah, that's what he said. H U B R E S. Yeah. What's it say? Come on. <laughs> Slow internet. I know it's in French, the French word. You want to use that ever? It's a long word. <laughs> it's a particular way arrogance works. It's like this self, it's like this complacent sense of, you know, righteousness, you know. When all the good things happen, we never ask. Well, there's no humility there. We never think, why does this happen? You know, what are the causes? The hubris is, I, de I deserve it. I deserve good things. So we're very greedy about it. And then, because of aversion, anger, when bad things happen. How dare that happen? I don't deserve it. This is coming from ego grasping. That's this incredible kind of, like, a, like this hubris that I'm saying. We have an assumption that we deserve good and don't deserve bad. This is actually quite fascinating. You know, that's like, like I say, it's like looking in your bank account. How dare there be no euros in my bank? I deserve euros. You'd never feel that, would you? Because you know that the amount number of euros in your bank is equal to the amount of work you do. You're the creator of the euros. So when you do even see a thousand in your bank, you don't take it for granted. 
you know it's your it equals your hard work. That's the feeling of karma. When you, good things happen. Wow, that's the fruit of my virtue. There's a humility comes from that. And equally, you don't look in the garden and go, who put weeds in my garden? How dare there be weeds in my garden? I don't deserve weeds. It's your garden. They're your weeds. You must have put them there, babe. So just naturally in these two scenarios, there's an ownership. But when it comes to happiness and suffering, because of attachment, there's this arrogance that I deserve it. But without cause. You don't ask yourself, well, I wonder what I should do to get happiness. This is why we're so mad, get angry with our mother and our father. You know, I, they didn't consult me in making me, did they? So they're going to dare to make me. They had better be perfect mother and father. How dare they harm me? But it's, and that whole view is irrational. It's like just random nonsense. So there's this, you know, this shock when our mother and father don't behave properly. We're infuriated, you know. But if you've got a good mother, she feeds you every day and looks after you. Just, you, know, if you, you just take it for granted. Well, that's such a job, isn't it? You know, it's her job. There's such an arrogance in that attitude. There's an arrogance in that attitude. And it's ignorant. There's no cause and effect. It's an assumption. I deserve happiness. And I don't deserve suffering. Well, who says? Analyze it. What's the logic of that? Because it's showing we don't have a view of cause and effect. This is Buddha's whole point. Are we communicating here? So aversion and attachment are completely rooted in the ego grasping, which is the one that believes in no cause and effect. So if your father's kind to you, you do deserve it. Every moment of his kindness to you is due to your virtue. Be so delighted with that. It's like looking at the dollars and your euros in your bank. You do deserve them. You work for them. You're so proud of yourself. Wonderful. Look at that hard work. So every time your daddy is kind, every time you're, if you like, every time your daddy doesn't harm you, every time your daddy doesn't abuse you, every time your daddy doesn't not feed you, every time your daddy doesn't not pay the school bills, not pay this every time your daddy doesn't not pay the school bills. In other words, we take it for granted. We take him for granted. I just deserve happiness. He's my father. He should do that, isn't it? It's like saying there should be flowers in my garden. Hey, I deserve flowers. But you've got to ask the question, who creates the garden? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, it's my garden. Oh, dear. We never think that. This is the arrogance. So be delighted that you, your mother, your father treated you nicely. Because even the father that sexually abused you. I know it seems so shocking to talk these things, you know. I'm sorry to say it, but he still did some good things. He still did some good things. He probably had a job. He probably educated you. But this is, this is too shocking to think like this. Yeah, your mother was mean, neurotic, depressed, lazy. 
Yeah, join the human race. The human beings like you. But our trouble is, we remember only the bad things and paint the whole person with those bad things. Now, I'm not saying it's cool to abuse your daughter. It's heavy duty. It's too shocking. We can't cope talking like this. It's too shocking, you know. So if, you, you know, your, your father was mean to you, for your own practice, forget him. It's up to him what he does with his life. This is where compassion comes in. This is heavy duty for us. And you can't do this. You can't do this what we're just talking about here until we've done the wisdom wing. Because only now you'll know why this dynamic, this karmic relationship, you know. But, but this is a minefield for us in the, in, in the West. You know. So if we're not ready for it, don't do it. You know, if you haven't got, a, you haven't worked out yet why it is the person harmed you, then leave it alone. Deal with yourself. Do the wisdom wing. That's why compassion. Compassion sounds sort of all lovely, you know. But it's heavy, heavy duty. The Buddha's view of compassion, genuine compassion, valid compassion, is outrageous, is profound, you know, and is based on understanding karma. Because it's not partial compassion. It's based on knowing why things happen. Yeah. So one step at a time. Mm. And that's why with karma, we've got to understand what causes us to be miserable. Why do I do neurotic things? And why do neurotic things happen to me? This is due to my past karma. So this is massive already. So understanding this brings, some re brings like a softness, a kindness to yourself. Truly, then it's easy to do it to others. But if you, if you think of karma in terms of blame and guilt, then you're not ready for compassion. Out of ignorance. We didn't know that we did things that would now is going to be the cause of our suffering now, you know. You know, like if I'd known that mild, smoking too many Marlboros would give me cancer, I would have stopped smoking, but I didn't know, did I? That's it. So you should have kindness to yourself, not beat yourself up. It's out of ignorance. You didn't know you were causing yourself future suffering. You know, it's just the, anal it's just the analogy. So out of kindness to ourself, you know, you think, I'm sick of this suffering. I'm going to change. Now you can have compassion. Everyone's in the same boat. That's why I like that story and I always tell in 2003 when I was running the prison project. In, based in the States. Based in the States. And Richard Gere invited His Holiness to New York. And he also invited, he invited 20 former prisoners. All of whom had done some kind of meditating in prison. So it's a whole cross-section of Americans. Black, white, male, female. And it was a very moving day. All the talking about their suffering and everything. And they met His Holiness. And they met His Holiness. And he also invited two young Tibetan nuns. Tibetan, you know, Buddhists since they're little girls, obviously. So it's their culture. This view of karma is in their bones. It's just the way they think. So they are imprisoned, tortured, sexually abused, you know, several years, couple of years, I don't know. And they're talking about it. 
I think the first thing that was really shocking to the Americans, probably if you want to quantify suffering, then maybe you could argue that theirs was worse than everybody else's, possibly. But the part that I think that's really quite shocking, and this is to us in the normal, in our culture, they weren't angry. This is a minefield for us. Because we think we assume anger is normal and healthy and healthy. And why? Because you must be angry when bad things happen to you. Because you don't deserve it. You're an innocent victim. So it's necessary to be angry. So p clearly you can say part of the process has to be that. But a common way that people deal with abuse and suffering and this is very much when it gets caught up, especially with sexual abuse. You know, this, and it's, this, we have to understand this, we have to understand attachment and aversion again. Remember that attachment is there, this, this deep craving in us to have nice things. So that the daddy abuses you. The priest abuses you. Heavy, heavy duty. There's no question. Outrageous behavior. No question. But because of the, you know, that power dynamic, daddy or the priest, yeah, and then because you've got attachment like everybody else, join the universe. We've all got it. But the particular way your attachment works, whereas in your attachment, when it doesn't get what it wants, you're one of the people who's more patient. And your thwarted attachment doesn't manifest as anger. It goes in. And because it's such a shocking experience, and it's so caught up with guilt and shame and self-blame, you literally turn it, completely uh, bury it away. <laughs> this is really common. Just can't, because you just, attachment just can't cope with this terrible thing. Now, other people, other type of personality, when bad things happen, their, their, their attachment is not getting what it wants either. And then it, anger will manifest. So there are lots of examples of people who have been abused. The first example, live in denial, and then have their memories later. But you also hear about people when the priest tries to do something to them, even, even a child, Excuse me, mate, what are you doing? Bugger off. <laughs> it's possible. There are examples. And that person doesn't suffer so much. But our problem with that is, if, a person, if the victim doesn't suffer, why should I get mad at the oppressor? So it's almost like we need a really suffering victim. The more they suffer, the more angry we can get at that monster. Are we communicating here? I think emotionally, I think it's psychologically, it's quite mixed. It's quite kind of complicated. Are, we, are, we, are you hearing me at all or not? Or not? In other words, in general, the Buddha's view, like I said that, you know, the Buddha's view is if, if you don't have anger and you confront the thing, there's less suffering. But this to us sounds like you're putting the, in, the, the responsibility on the victim. Sounds to us as if we're putting the responsibility onto the victim. So those young women, they didn't have anger. Not because they buried it. 
They hadn't buried these experiences. They dealt with them in their face every day. And why didn't they have anger? What is, listen to anger. How dare you do that to me? Or why is this happening to me? They had neither of those responses. They have an explanation. It's called karma. So that helped them, informed their experience of it and therefore helped them deal with it. Help them deal with it. Help them live with it. Help them work with it every day. So you could argue they suffered less because of it. And then they were sad. There were tears. It wasn't a comfortable experience. Give them a key, they would have happily run away. So then one of them at the end said, tears coming. And of course, we had compassion for our torturers. Because we knew we must have harmed them in the past. And because they will suffer in the future. So that's because they understand karma. So Buddha's point is this. Whatever goes on in here, whatever views we have, whatever interpretations of life we have, the way that we interpret whatever's going on informs our experience of it. It's not set in stone. But just because somebody abuses you, that you'll suffer. This is too shocking for our minds. This is too shocking. We can't handle that. Because we want to blame. And the only, no, only way to go is to blame. There's no other explanation. Doesn't matter. Are we communicating at all or not? So it's quite complex, you know. Got to really look into this carefully, look into it, you know, understand the view, Buddha's view. So we can't have this level of compassion until we understand our own mind. And it's really simple. If you look into your mind, no, you're not a rapist. You're not a torturer. But if you look into your mind, look into your life, you'll accept that you've done some mean things sometimes to people. So check really carefully. Was there love and compassion in your mind when you said those words to that person? Or was there anger and hurt and jealousy? We all know the answer. So all Buddha's telling us is that the delusions in our mind, one, are why I suffer, and two, are why I harm you. So when you get that for yourself, then you can understand your abusive father. You can understand the pedophile priest. So when we say compassion, you see also we think it means, oh, the poor thing can't help it. No, it doesn't mean that. So when you realize the child, karmic connection with this priest, yeah, the child is the victim in this life, the priest is the pedophile. Terrible. You can't argue, it's terrible. It's shocking what's happening. But all the karma is is a technical explanation of why it happened. Yeah. So protect the child. Absolutely. And protect the priest. Put him in prison, for sure. But you'll have a reason, you'll know why he did it. Due to having been harmed in the past and his intense addiction to sex with children. And, and no control, no discipline. And just berserk. So when you know yourself why you do stupid things, now you can understand him. Yeah. Well, this is too much for our minds, you know. 
Are we communicating? I'm using extreme examples, I agree. We have to deal with our life according to our capacity. So we can't cope with this level of compassion. Don't go there, it's advanced. Excusez-moi, j'ai bien compris euh, l'explication du karma, mais quand ça fait des années que vous avez la colère, la jalousie, euh, de grosses violences envers une seule et même personne, 60 ans pour moi, j'ai 60 ans, ouais. euh, est-ce que le peu de temps qui me reste, peut-être ce soir, peut-être euh, un an, deux ans, trois ans, même si je fais le pardon, la compassion, l'amour et que j'essaye de planter des graines positives sur cette personne, est-ce que ça me garantit que dans une vie prochaine, je ne la retrouverai pas avec la même colère about karma and compassion and all mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you've been experiencing, let's say, uh, abuse or yes. hurt from yes. somebody and yes. uh, it's been like 60 years, yes. and uh, is it possible to imagine that uh, tonight or in the few years that I have to live, I will be able to forgive and that this will guarantee me that <coughs> I, I won't meet again that person in another <coughs> life and that will keep <coughs> abusing me? Non, non, mais la, la, la colère, c'était... So is it uh, so is this a real situation or just some some est -ce abstract est, question? Est-ce que c'est une situation euh, véritable ou est-ce que c'est une question abstraite? Ah non, c'est véritable. It's a real situation. So I, I mean, I, in order to answer, I've got to ask questions, and if it's going to be too personal, you better stop the question now. Il n'y a pas de problème, c'est ma, ma grande sœur, on est en conflit depuis j'ai 60 ans, elle en a 62, hein? on ne sait pas parler sans se battre. Donc, c'est moi et ma grande sœur. Donc, nous avons été abusés pendant 60 ans. Nous avons été abusés pendant toute sa vie. You said she's been, no, been not abusing. No, we've we've been fighting, fighting all our oh, lives. Okay, 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 good. Okay, okay. Thank you. Now, okay, now it's okay. Good. Let's we can discuss. Then you're happy to discuss. De, de, you're happy heureuse d'en discuter de ton cas. You're happy to discuss. De, de que Ça me gêne pas. Ce que je voudrais savoir, c'est que puisqu'il y a des notions karmiques, je voudrais pas la retrouver avec la huh? même violence dans une autre vie. What? What? Because of this. Are you happy to discuss it? Est-ce que tu es content d'en discuter? I want to ask questions and things. Oui. Not oui, give, oui, I just want to, I can't soucis. give a simple answer. But we've got four okay. minutes before dinner, though. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, okay. Oui okay. ou non. First, I think what we're going to look at <laughs> is, okay, okay, two people, like you're talking. So clearly there's a strong karmic connection from the past. Strong history. Strong history of close. You both go to the same mother's womb. That's intense. But clearly there's anger on both sides. So that's the result of having harmed each other in the past. It's really clear. Yeah. So... I can't talk about your sister, but all I'm doing is talk to you. And you're sitting here in a Buddhist class, so let's look at the Buddhist approach for you. As you know, knowing it's due to past karma constantly has to inform your approach to it. In other words, it's like, how come my sister's mean to me? How come it's like this? What have we done? You know, we can't find a reason just in this narrow framework of this life. We can see that, can't we? Et donc, sachant que c'est dû à un karma passé, c'est ça qui doit façonner toute ton interprétation de la situation. Et c'est pas de se dire oh, comment est-ce que ça peut m'arriver à moi, comment est-ce qu'elle peut me faire ça. Non, il faut que ce soit cette compréhension du karma qui so if, as your, so, forme ton interprétation. So for your for you as a practice. Donc pour toi comme pratique. First, understanding karma, due to strong history in the past. And then second, your practice is, as you know, first level, 
control your speech. Isn't it? Main one. I mean, if you could control... If we in a relationship can control our speech, 90% of the problems are finished. Has speech been part of your problem with each other? Or is it just in your minds? Ah, non, c'est surtout la parole. That's it, isn't it? This is, this is utterly, for me, this is really, it seems kind of simple, but it's really profound. It's like if you've got two dogs who don't like each other together, like two cats, you know, put them together, then of course they're going to behave constantly harming each other. Two children together, and no doubt you kids, you're close in age. Deux ans de plus, c'est là. Yeah, brought up close, to, brought up close together until you were like adults, teenagers, yeah. Isn't it? In each other's face every day. It's too much to expect. As children, you know, to change. So since you've been adults, and you've been practicing Buddhism, have you tried to change with your speech? Alors oui, j'ai essayé, mais systématiquement ça revient parce qu'elle sait me prendre par la corde sensible et me piquer où ça fait mal. Yes, I did try, but systematically again it comes back because she knows exactly how to push my buttons well, and, and she knows where it hurts. That's her problem. Mais ça c'est son problème. Your problem is unable to resist it. And not enough discipline. I mean, you know, we've got to be realistic. Ton problème, il faut uh. réaliser, c'est que tu n'arrives pas See, this is where if we really had common sense, if we know we can't handle it, it's like if you're an alcoholic, you can't stop being attached to alcohol. An intelligent person would remove them from the al remove themselves from the alcohol, wouldn't they? So if we know we can't handle this person in our life, if they trigger my anger, I can't control my speech, then an intelligent person, if we're brave enough, if we're brave enough, because it's family, we're not brave enough, you would cut, you would have no contact to protect yourself. But because it's family and all this heavy burden of responsibility and guilt or you can't not see her, she's the family, this kind of thing. It's like a nightmare, isn't it? So you have contact all the time. She lives down the road. She lives down the road. Elle habite pas loin, mais j'évite de la voir. Mais le peu de fois où il y a des réunions de famille. Yes, she, she she lives close, and I try not to see her. But uh, when there are family meetings, then. That's right. That's a trouble. See, the tyranny of problem. families for me is really shocking. And we have all this guilt. You shouldn't go to family things, you know. Uh, it's really, really painfully hard, isn't it? And the karma is so heavy between us when it's family. You know, we're like red rags to the bull, aren't we? So in your mind, all you can do is do your best, sweetheart. You know, as much as you can try to protect your speech. As much as you can try to protect your speech. So is it mainly your own sadness is about your own uncontrolled speech or is it the pain she causes you? Which is the main suffering for you? C'est que comme je fais un enseignement, enfin je suis un parcours bouddhiste, je me dis que je crois que j'y arrive et non j'y arrive pas parce que je lui réponds derrière. Après ce qu'elle me dit, je m'en fous mais I don't care what she says to me but uh, it's uh, mostly that uh, being on the Buddhist path and I try to follow the teachings and then I don't manage. So it's more about myself. I understand. And oui, that's usually when it comes to the speech. Et, et habituellement yeah, the speech, isn't it? I know this is really fascinating. Isn't it? This is the, I think we can see most of us in this room don't go and rape and kill. It's our mouth, you know. It's our mouth. So, you know, 
Don't beat yourself up. It's okay. You're doing your best. You understand karma? At least it explains to you. In your heart, you try to understand her. In your heart, you try to forgive her. Yeah. Well, that's oui, oui, j'essaye, bien sûr, puisque je comprends la notion de karma, mais ce que je ne voudrais pas, c'est que, yeah. comme ça Vous fait 60 ans qu'il y a de la haine, euh, yeah. ne pas l'avoir après dans notre vie encore à la subir. Quoi. It, but uh, because there's been these 60 years that's of right. hate, History, I, know. I, 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 right. I, I don't want to have to experience this again in the next life. No, I know, darling, it's okay, don't worry. <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right, darling. It's okay. Merci. It's okay. It's okay. Merci. So, do you, in your own mind, though, in your practice, do you have, do you have, do you, re, you do the, the four opponent powers? You regret the harm you've done. You regret the anger. You regret the speech. You don't want to do it again. Do you have this kind of attitude in your mind about your side of it? Dans ton esprit et dans ta pratique, est-ce que tu pratiques les quatre pouvoirs d'opposition? Est-ce que tu regrettes uh -huh. la colère? Est-ce que tu regrettes les yes. mesures que tu euh, Sweetheart, this is incredible. So what you've got to realize is your garden's got a lot of weeds in it. But you're sowing good seeds all the time. So if you really clean up your part of it, and in your heart you really forgive her, and you really want her to be happy, and you, in your heart you try to have compassion, and as much as you can try to shut your mouth, and this is the, big, the main practice for you, this is the biggest practice for you, And this will make you ve this will make you very happy. The next time you see her, next time you see her, you've got to make a vow every day, though. This is why the four opponent powers are such an important practice, and we're going to do it. We're going to discuss it tonight. You're going to be here tonight. No. Wait. Okay, we'll discuss the four opponent powers tonight. This is where we can make changes. We have to have confidence in this process. You know? So we'll talk more tonight. But darling, yes, there's a strong karmic connection. You're going to meet her again. But if you work on your part of it, and work on your mind, work on your part of it, the next time you meet, she'll be this lovely person. You won't even... No problem. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Merci. We'll talk later. Have dinner, okay? Eat.